juggling, the ultimate test of accuracy, being forced to make the same exact throws and catches hundreds of times over takes years and sometimes even decades to perfect. Juggling has attracted people from all across the globe. Though most juggle for pure fun, there is a select few that try and push juggling to its absolute limit. This is the world record progression for seven club juggling. Before I start the video, I just wanted to say I now post new content like this every week, so if you're new, be sure to subscribe. It's free. Enjoy the video. What is a juggling club? A club is a roughly cylindrical object, usually around 20 inches long, with a slim handle in a center of gravity near the more bulbous side. Jugglers have been using them as they currently are for over 50 plus years, and have become a standard piece of equipment alongside the juggling ring and the juggling ball. Secondly, in juggling there is two types of successes. A flash, which is where each object is thrown and caught once, oh and a qualify, God. which is where each object is thrown and caught at least twice. For example, a 7 ball qualify would be 14 catches, whereas a 7 ball flash would be only 7 catches. With all that out of the way, let's jump right into it. Most modern records have a lot of footage and a lot of resources to check out. Seven Club Endurance is not one of those. Most of our documentation takes place before the use of video cameras and long, long before the easily accessible phone camera. The first half of this video is going to be dedicated to an article written by David Kane, so if you haven't already, it will be linked in the description below. The first known juggler to juggle seven clubs was John Breen. At the time, juggling clubs were made out of wood, and you can imagine how juggling seven wooden clubs might go. Breen, on the other hand, used basket-weaved clubs rather than wooden clubs. He was also the first juggler to perform six clubs, a five-club shower, and five clubs with another balanced on his forehead. In practice, Breen had been known for achieving 35 catches, possibly more. Sadly, he passed away in 1912 to tuberculosis at age 21. In 1904, it was said that John P. Thomas was working on seven clubs. According to John's daughter Lenore, he would juggle seven clubs, catching five, and leaving two to fall to the stage, having his brother toss two of the clubs into the pattern. Examining the circumstances, it didn't seem like the most convincing story, and while the nature of the start and unknown length of the juggle might not make this official, it is quite impressive, especially if using Van Wyck clubs to do so. Not to mention, it would predate John Breen by roughly six years. It wasn't until over 50 years later that another seven club juggler entered the scene. Some might say, hey, Enrico Rastelli performed six clubs and flashed eight, but he has never been recorded as working on seven clubs. In the year 1963, Guinness Book of World Records had Albert Petrovsky listed for juggling seven clubs. As you can see, his clubs look more like juggling sticks, but with a little extra weight tethered to the end. Again, it is unknown how long Albert could go for. This is where the game began to change. A year later, Jay Green made the first ever multi-piece plastic juggling clubs, sometimes referred to as compound clubs. If you have a club with a separate body, handle, and core, such as a Henry's Delphin, a PX3 from Play, or K8s, this is where that idea really took off. Clubs were evolving, and as a result, jugglers became less restricted. From the creation of these lighter, more versatile juggling clubs, came the breaking of old records once thought to be impossible. Just for example, Van Wyck clubs, the first commercially available clubs, weighed in at around 510 grams. Compare that to the weight of clubs that were made with this new design, and clubs could be more than twice as light. This was a big deal. Not even 10 years passed when we saw the first ever performances of seven clubs on stage. Jack Bremlev of Czechoslovakia and Matika Virago from Romania were performing together in a circus. They had been practicing seven clubs and decided to perform it at the same time in separate tents. Bremlev would become more famous for his seven clubs later down the line, but this is quite possibly the first time it was ever performed in a show. American juggler Kit Summers had been known to get up to 55 catches 
in practice around the year 1981, making him the first person recorded to officially have broken past 50 catches. Demetrius Alcris was also known to have done some runs around the same time frame, and Soviet juggler Yeveni Biaro is the first person in this video with public video evidence. Here you can see him practicing juggling in some hallway. Perhaps the most interesting documentation of juggling in this video, Chin Pen Chen is recorded as juggling seven rackets. Somewhere around the same time, Albert Lucas ties the Guinness World Record for seven clubs by getting a qualifying run. Now, all the jugglers we've shown so far are nothing short of remarkable. However, none of them really compare to our next juggler, Anthony Gatto. Born in 1973, Gatto began making waves in the community at the age of only eight. In 1986, Gatto achieved 44 catches in the IJA Numbers Championship, making him the best seven club juggler by far at only age 14. Once Anthony showed that long runs were indeed possible, other jugglers started trying to duplicate the feat for themselves. Jugglers like Bruce Timon, Jason Garfield, and Francis Roxas followed suit. Ever since, 35 years later, Gatto has held the record, breaking it in practice footage, until eventually setting us at the current record of 4 minutes and 23 seconds in 2013. Why is it that this record went from as short as 55 catches to over 1,040 catches? I think the answer is simple. Gatto doesn't really have any competition. Even in his biggest rival, Vova Galchenko, he has only managed around 300 catches, less than a third of what Gatto has done. In fact, the jump is so astronomical that many believe this record to be unbeatable. Anthony, in his prime, was the best at so many things. He wasn't specialized in seven club juggling, and to me, that says a lot. Jugglers like Vova dedicated their entire practice to five to seven clubs, while Anthony worked on balls, rings, clubs, head bounce, and various other skills and techniques. That is what set him apart. Not only is seven clubs incredibly mentally taxing, but it's also an intense physical feat. If you've ever juggled five clubs for over a minute, you should know what I'm talking about. It's exhausting. <laughs> This, without a doubt, is one of the most impressive juggling records out there. Now, while we're here, for the sake of fun, let's be hypothetical. Let's say someone was going to break the record. Who do I think it would be? If I had to make a wild guess, a wild card, I would put my money on one juggler. Esteban Almanacid, the world record holder for the seven ball endurance record. Not only does he have incredibly controlled technique, but his endurance is incredible. And I, kn I know what you're gonna say, I know, I know what you're thinking, but Zach, he's a ball juggler, he probably doesn't even juggle clubs. And I, I bet you're also saying, but Zach, seven clubs is astronomically different from seven balls. Y you know, you would be right to say that, but who else has ran seven objects for over 15 minutes? Who else juggles as clean as him? And if you look at his technique, it is very reminiscent of Gatto, firmly grounded and controlled the entire time. I think in a hypothetical world, Esteban could beat the record, but it would be a journey I'm not sure he will go on. And while the lineage of the Seven Club World Record might be a bit stale, it might be a bit boring, it's kind of the same person a lot, you'll be happy to know that Seven Clubs has evolved in a lot of other ways as well. People are doing back crosses, shoulder throws, Alberts, multiplexes, balancing, wild juggling seven clubs. It's all over the place. Eventually, you might even see a nice seven club world record progression for back crosses, but we'll just have to wait and see. What do you think? Who do you think, if anyone, could beat Gatto's record? Let me know down below. This was a very interesting world record progression to cover, and I hope you all enjoyed watching as much as I did making it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.